Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge Podcast, episode number 235. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Follow me at the Sky Lounge on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Music, and also check out the Sky Lounge on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Without any further ado, let's get shit started with episode number 235, Magical Menagerie of Menial Messy Moves, Sports Ball Fanaticism. Dude, there is a sporting event Every day in August. Literally every fucking day in August. As we speak right now, kids. The overtime for Game 3 of the St. Louis Blues versus Vancouver Canucks series is going on right now. Where the Canucks have a 2-0 lead in the series against the defending Stanley Cup champions. And we are going to keep an eye out on that game right now. As we talk about the NBA. Hence, we have my Anthony Davis jersey up behind me right now. And curiously enough, yes, I do speak of my Lakers, but I am still behind on my Lakers reviews on the YouTube channel. <laughs> because I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's uh, it's been kind of mediocre basketball uh, from a Lakers standpoint because you already clinched the first seed and you didn't really need to do much after that. So... I haven't really been catching up with the Lakers. So what I'm going to do is pump out three game reviews for tomorrow before, of course, the playoff for the Los Angeles Lakers on Tuesday, which will be against the Portland Trailblazers, the official eighth seed. How did that go about, boys and girls? You might be asking. Well, as we discussed a couple episodes ago, the Phoenix Suns actually went 8-0 in this bubble, but because of their standing and relatively weak you know, overall record prior to the bubble, uh, Portland winning their game against the Brooklyn Nets pushed them to the 8th seed and the Memphis Grizzlies to the ninth seed, and the Suns and the Spurs were officially out. And so Saturday... Portland Trailblazers and the Memphis Grizzlies faced one another, where in if the Portland Trailblazers just win one game, they are through, they are the eighth seed, but Memphis has to win two games. And in a very heartbreaking manner, Memphis gets their dicks kicked in because, of course, that's what they've been doing all since the bubble started. And yeah, Portland is now officially the eighth seed. Which leads us into our round one matchups of the NBA playoffs, where you have the first seed in the Los Angeles Lakers in the Western Conference taking on the Portland Trailblazers. <laughs> yeah, I have the Lakers winning this 4-2. to two. Or if Portland decides to choke on themselves and follow annual narratives, it's a clean sweep. Yeah. I understand that people are fascinated with 50-point you know, scores, especially on relatively weak defensive era and all that good shit. But I'm not a huge Damian Lillard fan. Never claimed I was. And quite honestly, I think the lack of defense within the Portland Trailblazers is going to be their detriment and their downfall. And although I do give them a chance to give, you know, one or two really solid games against the Lakers. Again, if they follow annual narratives, it's a sweep, but I think Lakers come out with a win there. Now, the fourth seed, Houston Rockets, will be taking on the fifth seed, Oklahoma City Thunder, wherein I think OKC wins it 4-3. to three. Something about Houston always just rubs me the wrong way. And I don't know if it's the undersized overall team dynamic or just the general fucking malaise of James Harden, especially now when it comes to playoff time. Although, different complexion, right? Because it is, you know, a couple of months after the regular season, middle of August. So maybe stamina and rhythm is different, but I see OKC as the better team overall. They have been all throughout the season, and quite honestly, it, I think they could win it in less games. So we'll keep an eye out on that. And another game we'll be keeping an eye out on is uh, the Denver Nuggets, the third seed, taking on the sixth seed in the Utah Jazz. 
I think Denver wins it comfortably four to one. Utah will play through Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, do what they can, but I think trying to answer for the depth of the Denver Nuggets, along with their superstars in Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic, who is just becoming a monster in front of us, is going to be a very tall task for the Utah Jazz. And so Denver Nuggets in five. And finally, in the Western Conference, you have the Dallas Mavericks taking on the Clippers, the second seed and the seventh seed. And I think the seventh seed Dallas Mavericks can win it in seven games. And I think this really is a toss-up. Um, of course, I am wearing my Luka Doncic t-shirt right now and hoping that Luka wins it big against the fucking Clippers. And yeah, I understand that PG Slut and Kawhi are going to do massive damage because they're really, really good. But don't count out the Dallas Mavericks, man. They've been really good all season. And... That's my dark horse to make it to the NBA Finals, man. I would love to see the Dallas Mavericks in the NBA Finals. That'd be some amazing shit to watch. And there are going to be some heavy contenders coming out of the East as well. With the number one seed in the Milwaukee Bucks taking on the number eight seed in the Orlando Magic, I think it's a sweep for the Milwaukee Bucks. I'd... Yeah, Orlando, you have home advantage. I, oh, so, so the fuck what? So home court doesn't mean shit in the bubble. Next. The Indiana Pacers taking on the Miami Heat. I think this is going to be a very close, very fun series where the Miami Heat will take a 4-2 win in the series to close it out in six. And the Pacers are going to give them a tough fight. The Pacers are always a good team to watch and very under-the-radar team just because the national headline doesn't think it's a sexy team and all. But very good fundamentals, very solid team overall, and it is going to be a very fun matchup between those two. And you have the third seed Boston Celtics taking on the sixth seed Philadelphia 76ers. I'm going to say a, yeah, I'm definitely saying a Boston Celtics sweep. No Simmons, you got Embiid and a couple of dudes. Mm -mm. I don't see it. I don't see it for Philadelphia. But what I do see for one Eastern Conference team is a dominant series where the Toronto Raptors will be taking on the Brooklyn Nets. And I think Toronto wins it 4-1 to one or in a sweep. The only reason why I say that one is because a guy like Karis LeVert and Joe Harris combining their efforts together with a couple of good depth guys in the Brooklyn Nets lineup can steal one game in the series. I do believe that. But overall, this just feels like a practice year for the Brooklyn Nets and the Toronto Raptors are locked and loaded. They look absolutely fantastic and it's going to be pretty fun to watch, you know, from our homes to see what happens in the NBA bubble and one coach is just going to have to enjoy this shit from home and not his office. And Alvin Gentry, the New Orleans Pelicans' former head coach, who was fired after five seasons with an abysmal 175 to 225 record. Jesus fucking Christ. You could blame AD all you want, but ownership, management, team personnel, everything in that organization of the Pelicans is just a mess. And everybody tried to convince me Zion Williamson is the fucking greatest goddamn thing since fucking sliced bread. And my God, look at him just taking this team and lead it. Like, what lead him to where? The fucking 10th or 12th seed? What the fuck are you talking about? Good Lord, you people were just going crazy and boner happy for Zion Williamson. You forget Luka Doncic is around. Jesus Christ. And, ooh. We are keeping a watch on the overtime game between the St. Louis Blues and the Vancouver Canucks. 2-2 tie in overtime. 14 minutes left. Vancouver does have the series lead at 2-0. But Blues have a very good opportunity here in the offensive zone. And they just kind of let it go. Kind of like how I let go of the news that the <laughs> MLS final took place. I totally spaced. I'm not going to lie to you. I did not give a shit about the MLS. Sorry, kids. I it just, I'm not going to pretend that I care about the MLS, but the Portland Timbers win. Hooray against 
Orlando City Soccer Club. Yay! Two to one. Fantastic. Why don't you keep fucking kneeling and get booed? <laughs> yeah, just Google fucking um, FC Dallas and boo. <laughs> You'll get what I mean. Because football is a fun sport that should just be about the sport. And keeping the conciseness of the nature of football is also important. Where I think the FA in England kind of realized this. And so FA Cup replays will be scrapped for the 2020-21 season. And so you're going to pretty much have these one-match bloodbaths and... You know, for bigger clubs, I mean, this does, you know, add to their benefit, you know, relative to the smaller clubs uh, in lower tiers because you have, you know, better personnel. You're, you're paying more money for depth and all that shit. So it should be interesting to see how things fall, unfold for the underdogs, generally because the FA Cup is a very fun, you know, underdog uh, heavy kind of performance and, and tourney. So very curious. Very curious to see how that turns out. And speaking of fun tourneys, kids, the Champions League quarterfinal results were out. And yes, these were also just one legs only. Just one match, knockout, next week, very next stage. It feels like a fucking knockout tournament in, in Europe or the World Cup, shall we dare compare. But here's the thing, man. The matchups have been great. The results have been fantastic, and it starts off with the Atalanta uh, versus PSG matchup, which saw PSG coming back very late with a 2-1 win, and they are headed to a semifinals match against RB Leipzig, who also grabbed a 2-1 win against Atletico Madrid, and Madrid is just one of those teams where you feel, mm, you're, your potential's always there, but... Something just feels a little off. But good on RB Leipzig. I believe that's their first time getting to a Champions League semifinal, if I'm not mistaken. But good on them to get the major upset on, you know, relative to the uh, the bookkeepers. And so off they go to face PSG in the semifinals. And, man, we got the two fucking other matchups. <laughs> Bayern Munich, 8. FC Barcelona, 2. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> you know, as an Arsenal fan, I can tell you right now, we know exactly how it feels. I know exactly how that motherfucker feels. But holy shit. For that to happen to fucking Barcelona on the biggest stage in cl European club football, Holy fuck, what a treat. What a fucking treat. Every Barcelona fan is crying. It was one of the greatest fucking things to see on the internet. Just complete peace and unity amongst all football fans because of the just vitriol and hatred against Barcelona. <laughs> it's just fucking hilarious because the amount of fucking money they spent and the messy talk just it doesn't equate to shit. It's the same thing with Manchester City. They lost to Leon 3 to 1. Now credit to Leon. They're a great club. They have they have a way to just consistently have good scouting to find great gems and talents young and cultivate them and get them to that next level. And dude, you know what's so fucking funny about Manchester City? Since Pep Guardiola has become manager at Manchester City, this club has spent over 700 million pounds in player acquisitions. Oh, you won the league. Oh, FA Cup. Oh, League Cup. Fan-fucking-tastic. The entire reason this club was assembled within the parameters of the finances when Pep came here was to win the Champions League. 700 million pounds with nothing to show for it. Unbelievable, man. So these two knockouts for me are some of the craziest fucking things we could have seen. And it sets us up for a fantastic 
set of semifinals where you have uh, the... I apologize, boys and girls. It's fucking starting over my goddamn words here. Dry mouth and watching hockey and reading scripts. My brain is too stupid to process all these informations at once. But what I'm not too stupid for is two great semifinals in PSG taking on RB Leipzig and Bayern Munich taking on Leon. Now, we shall know the two finalists on Wednesday evening, but my guess is just based on all the optics, it's going to be PSG versus Bayern Munich in the finals, which is going to be amazing if that happens. But I would love to see this too. Just a same country matchup like last season with England, but it could be either PSG versus Leon or RB Leipzig versus Bayern Munich, which would just be amazing shit. I don't care what the fuck happens at this point because no England clubs, no English clubs are there, no fucking Barcelona, none of those goddamn teams that annoy me. And yeah, I, I might not like Bayern Munich, but I can handle a German team winning that shit. I don't really give a fuck, but holy crap. Champions League has been pretty fun to watch. And yeah, I know, when I talk Arsenal, it's some ironic shit because we're not in the Champions League, we're in Europa League. But Ars Anal makes some headlines this week because they fire former head of football in Raul Sanyehi and they have current manager... Managing director, I apologize. Managing director, V9, and I will never attempt his fucking last name. <laughs> they got man current managing director, V9, taking on the role as a head of football. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Sanyehi was always a guy who came with talks of coming from Barcelona, and you know how shady shit is at Barcelona. Always. And yeah, seeing him get sacked... Not even a year and a half after his, you know, initial hiring. Just reeks of cronky management. Just constant turnovers. Bad managerial fines. Bad executive fines. Instant regret. You know, and pretty much making a fool out of the fans and the players. And you really think people really want to come to this fucking club. You got another fucking thing coming, man. I mean, I love Arsenal Football Club, but fucking A. They, they just find themselves to make, you know, they just find themselves a, a path and a way to make themselves a joke all the time, which just pisses me the fuck off, but it happens. It happens, kids. It does. What's also happening right now is some fantastic NHL hockey where, oh my God, Jake Allen and Vancouver's Mott crashed into each other in the goalie net. Jake Allen looks a little shaken up right now with 10 minutes left to go in overtime. And yeah, NHL action is happening as we speak right now. And NHL action has been happening all throughout. The fucking playoffs are glorious, man. Round one, NHL playoff hockey. Kids, if you don't watch hockey, start now. Start now. This is the perfect fucking time to start hockey. And it is just some unbelievable shit. And yeah, Jake Allen looks like he just kind of twisted himself there but they, they should be okay looks like they should be okay with 10 minutes left to go in overtime still considerable time with both teams having put up over 40 shots and jesus i think vancouver is going on to the penalty for slashing for tannin so we'll keep an eye out on that game as as we keep saying but Let's talk about the other fucking matchups that's been going on in the Eastern Conference. The Boston Bruins taking on the Carolina Hurricanes are up 2-1 to one in the series. And the Hurricanes' own player, Sveshnikov, is injured. And seemingly he will be out for an indefinite period of time. So the Hurricanes have a tremendous hill to climb. And yes, Tuka Rask did leave the bubble stating that he wanted to be with family and... That's his decision. That's fine. I mean, I don't really give a shit either way just because I'm not a Bruins fan, but I know there are going to be fans that will feel strongly one way or the other. I mean, this will happen. I'm not going to fucking pretend that, oh, I'm, I'm totally okay with it. Well, no. I mean, if 
if I was a Vegas Golden Knights fan and Tuka Rask was the goaltender in our club, I'd be fucking a little pissed off. Like, oh, really? Okay, but I mean, I, that fair. That's your family. So I, I'd be in that kind of middle always. Like, and it's the same thing with Avery Bradley with the Lakers, where it's like, all right, family, but you, you had the whole fucking statement thing. Yeah, fine, whatever, man. I just, just fine. You, you don't need to come. But Carolina has quite the hill to climb. And so do the Washington Capitals, who are down in their series 0-3 against the New York Islanders. And the Islanders have, again, been playing a very metronome style of game, winning in clutch short ways. But the Capitals are looking really lackluster here. And I know they just won a cup two years ago, but this feels like they're kind of declining. But they still got another game to try to pull it off and so we'll see if the capitals can perhaps pull off the reverse sweep maybe but it's gonna be very difficult because the islanders look pretty damn spot on and you know what i could say the same thing about both teams in the tampa bay lightning and the columbus blue jackets Yes, the Lightning is up in the series 2-1, to one, but here's why I will always defend the Columbus Blue Jackets. Man, if you play defense like that, and if you have that much fucking stamina to keep going after you play five fucking overtime periods, and you're in game three just still fucking grinding it out, and your goaltender is just a beast, I'm going to root for you. I want you to do well. And to me, Columbus still looks fucking great, but they can't score on a free hooker. So they got to figure that shit out. Tampa has looked clutch. I will admit that. But overall, I just don't, I just don't trust John Cooper. I just don't do it. Man, that, that dude is just all kinds of whack. And we're just going to have to see how the man handles himself. And, you know, when you talk about men handling themselves, you got to talk about this fucking amazing Eastern Conference series in the Philadelphia Flyers versus the Montreal Canadiens. And yes, the Flyers are up in that series 2-1, to one, but this series is all about uh, Carter Hart versus Carey Price. Carter Hart became the youngest Flyer in, in Flyers history to post a shutout in the playoffs. Youngest player to ever do it in Flyers history, 22 years old. Carey Price, despite the loss today, at one nothing in game three looks spectacular as he's always been doing this entire fucking restart and man i can definitely see this series going to deep six or seven but man if carter hart can just buckle down Three or four games, I could definitely see the Philadelphia Flyers taking this shit to uh, another level, really. And so it's going to be very curious to see how all that whittles down, man. And we are still watching this overtime game between the St. Louis Blues and the Vancouver Canucks. Still 2-2, two two, still in overtime, with about seven minutes left. And... Yeah, Vancouver's just trying to move the puck out of their defense with St. Louis very heavy on the forechecking here. And because the Vancouver Canucks are up in this series 2-0, you know, you realize that game three, St. Louis is all about just pushing the pace and making sure they don't fucking die and kill themselves, really. And that's the key for them. But Jacob Markstrom is just being an absolute beast right now and stopping ev almost every chance that the St. Louis Blues are shooting up. So we'll keep a lookout on that as we continue to talk about other uh, matchups in the Western Conference. The Dallas Stars and the Calgary Flames tying the series in Game 4, 2-2. Two two. Dallas Stars. Coming from behind, if I'm not mistaken. And this series just has a pure game seven feel to it and i am ready for the madness game sevens are amazing they have a next level feel it sucks if your team is on the losing end i understand that as well as anybody else but 
if that game, if that series can go to seven games, I, I would be very excited. I would be thrilled, as a matter of fact. And so you have this other matchup in the Western Conference in the Colorado Avalanche taking on the Arizona Coyotes, where we thought the Colorado Avalanche would just fucking, you know, bully the Arizona Coyotes and beat the shit out of them. But no, Arizona decides to scratch back in game three and take a win to perhaps change the complexion of the series to put themselves in favor in game four. So that would be something very curious to see if a very young but very talented Colorado team can handle. And speaking of handling shit with talent, the Vegas Golden Knights couldn't handle their shit in game four where they lost to the Chicago Blackhawks, where, my God, Corey Crawford has been absolutely unbelievable. He has been playing like a god and the Stanley Cup champion that he is. And Vegas in, I would say, the third period of Game 3 and all of Game 4 was just struggling to figure out how to get through Corey Crawford, and they just couldn't solve it. And it's unfortunate because I would have loved to see Vegas sweep the Chicago Blackhawks. But we will now have a game five on Tuesday. And Jesus fucking Christ, dude. If you lose game five, I have nothing to say. I'm just going to be irritated as all hell. That's what the fuck is going to happen. Because I think the Vegas Golden Knights are much better than the loss today against the Chicago Blackhawks. They are much better than that. But they decided... To go ahead and just wiggle their dicks around and let Corey Crawford get hot and do his thing. It's a fucking shame. And what's really a fucking shame is there's five minutes left in this overtime, and it appears as though because of the very physical battle in the neutral zone, neither St. Louis nor Vancouver will seemingly score. But here we go, St. Louis on the fucking breakaway and score! Shen with the game winner on a turnover as soon as I say physical shit in the neutral zone. My goodness. Markstrom just kind of went off the ice pissed off. But I would love to get a I would love to get a replay of this goal to kill OT. And it looks like it was Stetcher with the turnover. That's just what the camera angle seems to be applying here, but still waiting on the replay here, boys and girls, to see how the St. Louis Blues won in overtime against the Vancouver Canucks. So, unfortunate pass from the defensive zone. Actually, I would say turnover, really, from the defensive zone for the Vancouver Canucks. And Stetcher completely losing the race against Shen and Markstrom. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if Markstrom should have had that, but Shen goes top fucking side. Just great fucking goal against Markstrom. And for St. Louis, you absolutely need this win. If you went down in the series 3-0, it would have been a fucking hard hill to climb back. So 2-1, to one, St. Louis is still down in the series, but... They got a little breathing space, and the Vancouver Canucks are going to have to do a little bit of soul-searching after Markstrom really, really came big. I mean, St. Louis had 49 shots on goal. Vancouver had 41. And I honestly don't think Allen is all that good of a goaltender. And with Vancouver's young offensive talent, they should be doing better, but... It happens, kids. It happens. So Vancouver is still up in the series 2-1. to one, And I'm telling you, these playoffs are absolutely amazing. And it's going to continue. It's just going to fucking continue. Playoff sports ball is just all around in August. And it's a wonderful and beautiful thing, boys and girls. Ultimately, sports is good for your soul. But hurts your balls. It really does. And on the next episode of the Sky Lounge, tune in to face the face you'll face 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 yes are they playing gloria i'm not gonna fucking unmute that shit i'm broke can't pay fucking music royalties man fuck that shit all right 
All right, motherfuckers. I appreciate you dropping by this episode. Follow me at The Sky Lounge on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Music. And also check out The Sky Lounge on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Till next time, fuck off.